Hey coaches, welcome back. This is uh, Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Thanks for joining me today in my podcast over at Coach Parker's Coaching Youth Football Tips and Talk podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm your host and today we're going to do part four of Keys to Fun, Success and Winning. That's part of the training for new youth football coaches series and we're going to get into part four of that and before we do if you get a moment, please subscribe to the podcast or the video podcast. Really appreciate it. Helps it in the uh, search results of the podcast and search engines and gets us up at top so more people can listen to this free youth football coaching tips by, uh, by me, Coach Parker. Really appreciate it. Cost you nothing. Please do so. Okay, let's jump right into it. So this is the fourth part of this series, Keys to Fun, Success, and Winning. And last time, uh, we talked about recruiting players, player retention, and player position recognition on your team. Basically, no daddy ball and favoritism. Uh, and today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, parent management and communication. Uh, next one will be league partnership and communication and then practice plans and then blocking and tackling. So hopefully we'll get to all four of those and I will put a link to the first three podcasts uh, down below along with some other links of uh, some information that we'll talk about in the podcast. So uh, let's get into it here. So the first one the issue we'll talk to today is parent management and communication. Now, I've done three other podcasts on parent communication and issues around that, so I'll put those links below where you can take a look at that. But that's a whole series within itself, and I may add to that. But take a look at that for a lot more information if you don't want on that. As far as parent management, make sure that um, your first week uh, you have a parent meeting and really prior to that parent meeting uh, you should have got the roster from the league or if you built your roster you should have had multiple communications via email phone calls text etc setting up all this first practice and what your first month may look like and who's on the roster and all of that that good stuff so you know, make sure that uh, when your league gives you that roster, because we have this problem at our league, that you call those parents fairly quickly. Uh, I know if we're not called on the, if you're if you're not calling those parents on the first day, the league will probably get phone calls because they hear other coaches calling other kids and they're talking. So make sure you're up on that. Um, and then let's say when you get your first week of practice, I like to hold that first parent meeting and it's pretty long. One of the coaches or all the coaches will take the, uh, the kids over and then uh, myself or my co-head coach will have the parent meeting. We've also had it where we had the parent meeting before the first practice. So you want to hold this fairly quickly and set down all your rules and expectations uh, for the parents uh, on how they should act within the league. The league's got rules. You should have your own rules that you want to make sure of and then what that's going to be. And be fairly firm and assertive that th these are pretty strict uh, because what I've seen is if you if you don't really define everything or you start giving people and say, oh, you know, this will slide, parents will take everything. If you give them an inch, they'll take a foot. You give them a foot, take a yard. Give them a yard, they want to pull, and then they want to resort. So th this is just how this works. So I'm pretty firm and assertive on my expectations. And I know when uh, my other co-head coach or other coaches will give these and they're not as assertive as us, there's usually issues that come up. Uh, so just be pretty tough. I think that's the best bet. Uh, people like leadership. Uh, and so be a leader, be tough, and give them what you expect. Uh, the other thing with parents and issues, you know, you want to nip all the issues that come up quickly. Uh, and what can help you with that is if you have your team parent or team manager, um, make sure that they're, you know, they know you and they like you and they can help you with all these issues because they'll hear people talking about stuff and then you can try to address these issues quickly 
if if you're unable to address parent issues or you can see sense something's coming uh let the league know about any of these issues like if you know there's one example that i have a league messed up a jersey some jerseys for one team and uh you know it was so minor the league wasn't going to redo the jerseys i think it was a misspell of a minor word somewhere and it was a really small lettering and you know the league just wasn't going to redo those those jerseys and uh the parents of that team got got riled up they had a problem parent on that team that riled the other parents up the coach kind of got riled up instead of standing behind the league and then that just became a huge issue so um if you notice something like that going on let the league know fairly quickly so they can help you address some of those issues that are gonna they're gonna come on and like i said before when you choose your team parent you may not choose it on the first practice or over the phone call unless you already know them from seasons past. You know, I like to kind of pre-interview, give them kind of a quick uh, interview and also let them do a couple of things before uh, naming them official if you don't know them. So they can help you understand the parents and what, what's going on because you want that team parent to be your fan so they can help you uh get through those issues the other thing is don't don't antagonize the parents against the league or you know make a parent upset and continue to kind of poke them that's really not getting you any anywhere you want to solve the issue and get the league in to help you solve that the other thing with parent management you know coaches dig themselves a hole when they have these favorites and they're doing the daddy ball and the whole parent group starts to see it if you have some of your coaches see it too That'll just bet fester and become a almost an unmanageable parent situation. So make sure you're you're watching that closely. The other thing is, you know, there's a lot of guys when they when I say be firm and assertive, you know, some people need you to explain it to them versus telling them in a kind of a harsh term tone. So make sure you explain maybe some reasons why you're doing this to some folks if they're not really getting it. And that may help a little bit um, instead of just saying, no, that's it, that, you know, that's the, you know, hit the highway kind of thing. Uh, in today's environment, that doesn't work as much. So some folks, you may, you know, they may want to ask a little bit more questions, be attentive to them. Uh, and then explain to them why you're, you know, this decision is being made that way. Uh, also on the parent management, you know, I have on the bottom of my practice plans, mingle with the parents. So definitely uh, mingle with parents after practice, socialize. Uh, the other thing with parent management that helps is, you know, over communicate, set up your team website, be organized, have a plan, don't play your favorites, make sure everyone is practicing. And you should try to anticipate issues. You know, being organized and not playing favorites and having a plan really shuts down a lot of issues, except for maybe uh, known parents that are difficult. Uh, sometimes the league already knows those, and if parents don't think the league doesn't know about difficult parents, even when they come from another league, they already know. So. Uh, make sure you're 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 working with those difficult parents and giving them a little extra love maybe uh, you also want to make sure you want to play your weaker players any chance you get in easy games to give them play times because at the end of the day parents want to see their kids on the field as much as possible so make sure that uh, you know if you get an easy game and you know you can win this game, play your minimum play players more than just your minimum plays. Uh, also, try to treat everybody with respect. Uh, yelling, screaming, all that really doesn't go far these days. And as always, contact the league for help when you have these out-of-control parents that are really expecting a whole bunch uh, from you when it's really kind of out of your control sometimes. I mean, some parents really just have, uh, they really do maybe have some expectations that are uh, not legitimate. And sometimes you need help with that and uh, definitely have the league help you with some of those issues. 
Uh, let's get on to the next edit. And as always, see the other three podcasts on Parent Comms. Uh, partner with the league and communication. Look, you know, if you rub the league's back, they're going to rub your back. So make sure you become a partner with the league and not a thorn. And like I said on this last example I had, if you kind of, you know, get your parents riled up against the league, the league's not going to be really happy about that. So, um, you know, co- the league really wants you to be a representative of the league and do everything for the league. Volunteer, help when you can, attend the meetings, res- respond to paperwork, get your paperwork all organized and filled out. And hey, if you're not good at organizing your paperwork and getting that filled out, give it to an assistant coach or team mom that's really good at that. They want you to communicate all the information that they've sent you via email or at meetings. They want you to be able to get that information to the parents, you know, weigh-ins. I don't know how many times coaches have forgot to tell their parents about weigh-in dates or getting a birth certificate date in, or they need something other, you know, other uh, grades or whatever, and they just don't tell the parents. Uh, the league, you know, they're dealing with probably four or 500 kids. You're dealing with maybe 20 people, 60 people. It really helps the league if you're getting all your information in, and then they give you a nice little check plus by your name. So when you need something, the league's there to help you. So, and trust me, I've been a commissioner before and worked with the leagues. If you're not doing your homework for the league, they know that. And the guys that work with the league usually get, you know, get some good stuff. So just be aware of that. The other thing, you know, there's just no reason to be talking to about the league negatively to parents and, you know, that they're cheating. Leagues are not usually cheating. It's just kind of the way it goes. Um, so getting parents riled up about that is really not helpful. If you don't like the league as a coach, then you need to choose another league. Uh, and if you think the league is cheating, then go to another league. I've certainly left the league because I didn't like how the league dealt with their roster. So that happens. So, But don't get, you know, 20 people riled up for the whole season because it usually backfires on you, the coach, too, because they're coming after everybody. Um, and remember, if you need help from the league, you just need to ask. I've done that several times with parents and with uh, practice times and with another coach I was having issues with in the league and they 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 will help you uh, you know navigate all of that uh, inform- um, issues so be a partner with the league communicate with the league uh, and get that get that information out there let's see our next subject to uh, keys to fun success and winning is practice plans I can't tell you enough about when I finally made a decision to go to written practice plans. And I use a format that uh, my coach used in high school. And my high school running backs coach was Drew Breeze's coach over in Austin uh, Westlake, I believe, when he was in high school. And so this practice plan he used, I've copied it. You can actually find it out on my website for free. And there's also a video uh, uh, on YouTube about practice plans, which I'll try to put a link down here that you can look at. But, you know, when I started writing these out and putting these together and passing these out to my staff and, and to parents sometimes, it just looks so good. Uh, the parents love it. They, they can see you're following a plan, that you're organized. Uh, and so, uh, if anything, I highly recommend having written practice plans even if you've got to write it on an index card or you just have a template you use every day uh it looks great to parents you know you've got that on your clipboard so i've i've seen it as a big help and even though you have a practice plan you know we don't do everything every time on the practice plan it kind of flows but i know as i've gotten older it helps me stay focused on really where i need to hit uh during practice uh, and always in, with practice, you, you really want to work on areas of weakness that you improve on. So, try, you know, you have a game, where did we not do well, and try to look at you know, working on those particular areas. If you always do the same thing at practice, you're really not probably going to improve on your areas of weakness. Uh, you want to keep your, uh, your blocks of time to about 20 minutes uh, and then move on. Kids... You know, 30 minutes is definitely it. 
but 20 minute blocks of time where or pods of time where you you know you do blocking tackling offensive backs offensive line d line d tackling that kind of stuff you also want to keep the pace moving fast if you keep your pace moving fast and everybody working in several stations you don't have to do as much uh, sprinting at the end of practice because they're always moving and doing stuff plus what we found when kids are always moving they're not talking as much and getting in trouble so that's a big thing uh, the other thing is I see too many people they spend 30 minutes stretching at the first of practice kids at this age 5 to 12 you don't really need to stretch too much there may be a few they can stretch you know pre-practice and stuff but we'll do a dynamic kind of warm-up and then we'll, we'll do pass pods to warm up and we have pre-practice stuff. So there's no reason to spend. You've only got about two hours to an hour and a half practice time. So there's no reason to waste 30 minutes uh, stretching because that's that's not really getting you anywhere. Uh, in general, offense will need more time to install than defense. So at the first of the season, just realize your offense is going to need a little bit more time for defense. Defense kind of clicks because everybody wants to play defense and tackle. The other thing I see a lot of coaches forget is blocking and tackling each practice. Make sure you're definitely teaching those aspects. A lot of coaches will just kind of gloss over blocking and throw those 12 linemen over there, you know, and they'll stand around watching the backs run, run on air. Don't do that. Uh, definitely focus on blocking and tackling. Have coaches that understand how to coach those. Start coaching that. Don't forget your special teams. You need at least 30 minutes a week. Sometimes that may be pregame in a pregame practice, but make sure you're getting your 30 minutes a week in special teams. That pays off for us tremendously. The other thing is, yeah, look for my practice plan video and on YouTube and blog posts and the practice plan book over at coachparker.org. That'll really help you out there and give you a lot more detail on your practice plans. And the last thing we're going to talk about is blocking and tackling before we get into choosing offenses, defenses, because I think so many coaches forget about blocking and tackling. You know, each practice um, and as a coach, the, the fundamentals that can transfer to high school, to college and everything is really blocking and tackling. No matter what offense or defense you choose or do in special teams there's always off you know blocking and tackling so make sure that uh, you've got a good coach that can teach each of these fundamentals and I throw in stance there too it seems like a lot of high school coaches always talk about kids don't know how to get into a three or two point or four point stance so make sure you're you're teaching stances too it's really the two or three fundamentals that everybody needs to learn and all of these things transfer to high school football and the college ball. And remember blocking, when I say coaching blocking, blocking isn't just lining two kids up and saying, oh, here, go and block. There's a whole technique on hand placement, uh, foot placement, uh, steps, blocking rules, God, gold, sab. Uh, knowledge of pulling and the different types of block, a crab block, a reach block, a zone block, a man-to-man -man block. There's there's a lot of stuff going on there. And they're also the running backs also need to learn how to block uh, in open field and on the move uh, and as a tight end or a wing back. And I see a lot of coaches forgetting this. So, you know, make sure I know as a coach, I enjoy coaching the offensive line because I know if I and, and I also know it's it, important that if you don't have the greatest backs in the world and a lot of times you know you don't get lucky and get the stud back if your team knows how to block you can have a pretty good season and so make sure that you understand and can coach blocking the other thing is on defense, I don't know what scheme you're using, but if everybody can tackle, it really doesn't matter so much about scheme. Uh, if everybody is a good tackler and not an arm tackler, so you want a good body tackling team. And tackling today has really progressed past just putting your head into the middle of somebody's gut or on the ball. You know, you're, it's really progressed into more of a rugby kind of the Seahawk tackling uh, progression and scheme there 
And so make sure uh, there's out on YouTube and you can see them on my site too. There's videos on Seahawk tackling and how that works. And, and make sure you watch that and understand how that works. You can also contact me via email and I can send you some more stuff on that. But, you know, and there's also different tackling um uh, uh, techniques, angle tackle, the open field tackle, close quarter tackles, linebacker tackles, uh, how your DNs are going to going to come in and rush and make tackles. So make sure you're practicing all these fundamentals along with stance. You know, there's an offensive stance, there's a defensive stance, there's a running back stance. So make sure you're looking at all that. And I and and I see too many coaches not doing these two or three basic skills each practice it takes reps reps and reps and i've hit 20 minutes and that is all i've got today remember coaching youth football is hard it's a learned skill it takes time it's like hurting cats parents are crazy there's league politics there are other good coaches that are trying to beat you too and maybe you didn't get any studs on your team and it takes a lot of time so just remember coaching youth football is hard if you want to help me out, head over to CoachParker.org. I've got playbooks over there for sale. Maybe you need some new ideas on offense and defense or blocking or some drills. They're over there. Choose one of those. That helps me bring more free content to, uh, to the coaching community and uh, all that good stuff. So you can head over there or you can subscribe and hit the like button and uh, all that good stuff and that helps me and that doesn't cost you anything so take a look at that but this was part four of keys to fun success and winning training for new youth football coaches at coach parker's coaching youth football tips and talk podcast i really appreciate you coming around remember to subscribe and as always play for fun and winning is funner this is coach parker Ciao. See you guys next time.